We are continuing to follow the developing story out of the Vatican, growing outrage over Pope Francis firing one of America's most devout defenders of the Catholic faith, but also a vocal critic of Pope Francis and his extreme privet, uh, pivots from traditional Catholic teachings. Bishop Joseph Strickland is from the Diocese of Tyler, Texas. His removal follows an alleged probe launched by Pope Francis earlier this year. The investigation included an examination of Strickland's use of social media and questioning his management skills. Strickland says he was targeted after he criticized the Pope's support of radical left-wing changes to the Catholic Church. Joining us now uh, to share more of this uh, about, uh, well, how he ended up in this circumstance, the bishop himself, Bishop Joseph Strickland. Your Excellency, I'm glad you can make it here to the program. When I first learned of this so-called investigation, it struck me as an illusion. The Vatican wasn't here in Texas to investigate or to formulate an opinion. They were here to justify their opinion that you needed to be removed. Can you explain to the folks how this all came about? And start with this. Did the Pope give you a reason for your removal? Um, thank you, Chris. Um, really, as always, it's, it's not about me. It's about Christ and his church. Um, really, as far as a reason, I was given by the nuncio quite a list of reasons, but as far as the actual A reason for my removal, um, I don't see that reason. But one of the uh, criticisms or one of the reasons was that I failed to be supportive of the Synod on Synodality that has just concluded at the end of October. and. I just was reading a book about Cardinal George Pell, um, and he wrote something that was published the day after he died, where he called the Synod uh, a toxic nightmare. And really, Chris, mm. I, I feel the call to speak to my brother bishops, uh, though I'm not on the floor of the meeting, I'm not at the meeting because of my recent removal from the Diocese of Tyler, but I'm still a bishop. I still love the Lord and his church. And I want to say to my brother bishops that this is the day for us to speak up for the bride of Christ. Uh, there's much that's happened. Five years ago, almost exactly to the day at the bishops' meeting, I asked my brothers, do we really believe what the church teaches or not? In the context of questions about Father James Martin. And in those five years, sadly, it appears that, that the answer is no. We don't really believe. And it's like we can mm. just reshape the truth of the faith in whatever way we wish. See, I really call Bishop, my that... brother bishops to, to, uh, to speak up for the faith that is Jesus Christ. Well, Your Excellency, I, I mean, you took me right where I wanted to go because I think there, there needs to be an examination. And I think the faithful are starting to see a separation between the church and the faith. And I'll get more into that in a minute. But I wanted to get your reaction. You know, after St. Pope John Paul II joined forces with Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher to, to defeat the Soviet Union, there seemed to be, in particular in America, an accelerated effort to build on an agenda to infiltrate the Catholic Church with with leftists, with communists, bent on destroying the church from within. Do you think we're seeing the fruits of that movement right now? Well, it certainly appears so, um, because the basic deposit of faith, which I've also been criticized for focusing too much on the deposit of faith, but I promised when I was ordained a bishop almost 11 years ago to guard the deposit of faith. And I've done my best to do exactly that. I mentioned Cardinal Pell's description of the Synod as a toxic nightmare. And if the man were still alive, I think he would be saying that. But of course, he died in January of this year. Um, mm -hmm. But we've, we've got to recognize that the truth doesn't change. Doctrine, of course, develops because the mystery of God and the mystery of Christ and his church is so profound that we can never say that we've exhausted it. It's a mi mystery beyond us as human beings. Yes, it develops, but it doesn't reverse course. And there's too much in the church today that is attempting to deny the truths that Christ died for. Um, I feel compelled right. 
to speak up to my brother bishops at this meeting and around the world. Yeah. And really, Chris, I well, would encourage you to share this. I'm just a kid from East Texas, but I believe deeply. <laughs> and this message, I believe, needs to go out to all of the bishops. We need to awaken to this toxic nightmare and say no, because the bride of wow. Christ is being fouled by sin, by blessing sin. And it's just, I hope and pray that many of my brothers will finally begin to join me in speaking up and saying no, no to this attempt to undermine the ancient doctrine of our faith, the deposit of faith. Right. The truth doesn't change. 2,000 years. No matter how much it's, we want it to. Yeah, Your Excellency, it's 2,000 years of Catholic tradition that seems to be just in the last few years Pardon, but flush down the toilet. And that, that leads me to the last question I have for you. As, as the church continues to divide the flock and, and target resistance to that division, there seems to be, in my opinion, as a, as a layperson, a growing separation between church, which is thoroughly corruptible, and I think the current Vatican has proven that, and, and, and the faith, which is uncorruptible, which is our relationship, our personal relationship with God, what is your advice to the faithful who may be thinking about abandoning their relationship with God because of the actions they see from men in the church? Well, thank you for that question, Chris, because it's probably the most important thing I need to say. Please, please don't abandon the bride of Christ that is the Catholic Church. Don't allow the corruptions of human beings, and we're all human beings, we're all sinners, but the church is the mystical body of Christ. Stay with her. Grow more holy. Grow closer to the sacred heart of Christ. But please, please don't abandon her to the foul uh, sinfulness that is overtaking the world and sadly the church as well. Please stay with her. And if you're, you're concerned and confused and saddened, then seek to grow in holiness. Pray the rosary. Pray before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, Eucharistic Adoration. Go to Mass and really reverently listen to those readings. It's a living Word of God. We've got to truly have a revival of faith. And I believe, Chris, it will come from the laity because too many prelates like myself, I'm one of many bishops in the world, and too many of us are asleep at the switch. We need to stand for Christ. We need to stand for his bride, the church.